We're in Madrid, we're at Fuse 2023. I'm here with Sadayuki Abita. He is VP and GM of RAN development at NTT Docomo and uh, always a major fixture at uh, events where Open RAN is uh, one of the main talking points. So Sadayuki, great to see you again. Thanks very much for joining us on Telecom TV. So I wonder if you could start by just giving us a quick update on uh, Open RAN within the NTT Docomo mobile network, because Docomo has been one of the um, you know, leading proponents and deployers of Open RAN in, in the past few years. Yeah, last year uh, we shared our uh, current network status, so we have already introduced the open interface and uh, deployed the mass vendor network and the fully mass vendor interoperable network. So last year we said. And this year uh, we announced that OREX in that uh, uh, last MWC Barcelona uh, together with the partners. The reason why we said OREX uh, have a new brand name uh, that uh, we are ready to provide VLAN solution. So uh, last MWC Las Vegas, so just uh, a few weeks before, uh, we announced that uh, so we uh, deploy the VLAN in commercial uh, with our one well, that our VLAN uh, partner solutions. And also we announced that uh, not only the VLAN, but also we have the we created the uh, RU. So OREX are you partners? Because that uh, so uh, the frequency band is different from countries, and uh, we would like to so provide that the best solutions according to that uh, operator's requirement. So we and uh, if that so one vendor provide all the equipment, all the frequency band is maybe that is very tough. Only the very very big vendor can do. But uh, so uh, the, if that some frequency man provide one vendor and so others and the one vendor, then we can so, you know extend our coverage. So that is that actually we did. And uh, the other thing that uh, what we provide from the OREX, that's as mentioned the VLAN and the VRU, and uh, not the VRU, uh, RU, um, and uh, uh, we uh, also provide SMO, so service uh, management acceleration. And uh, just uh, last week, we published a white paper jointly with Vodafone about the SMO. Okay, and, and all of this work is, is based on what you're actually doing in your commercial networks in Japan, is that correct? This, is, this isn't theory, this is something that you've deployed and now you're saying this works and this is something that can also be used elsewhere. Yes, we, we deployed our uh, commercial network. And as uh, mentioned last year, we already introduced a much better network, so a much better interoperable networks. So we can introduce, or well, we can deploy that VLAN anywhere in Japan. We don't need to uh, replace anything, and we can reuse or we, uh, the, our RU, existing RU, we're just adding that to VLAN. Now, one of the interesting aspects of the recent development at, at Docomo was the, the use of NVIDIA technology um, in the network. Now, NVIDIA isn't a new partner. This is a company that you mentioned quite some time ago that, that Docomo was working with. But it's quite new to see NVIDIA technology in a radio access network. Can you just explain how NVIDIA's technology is being used and and why? Yeah, actually we work not only the NVIDIA but also other accelerator vendors. Sure. Yeah, but uh, so so the NVIDIA uh, they provide that uh, so uh, the accelerator card. So uh, that, that is a PCI card we put on that their PCI card to that host server, and uh, most of that error part because that uh, we need that uh, so uh, signal processing power. That part is actually that uh, NV we use uh, NVIDIA uh, to, uh, Im to improve that the performances. O on that note, do you think that Open RAN is living up to the, the expectations of, of what uh, its supporters have always said that it's capable of achieving? Is it delivering real benefits to a company like Docomo? Yes, we were already introduced the match vendor as mentioned already. And why is that the benefit is the 
we can avoid that. Uh, we can so avoid the supply chain risk. What? For example, that uh, one that uh, one vendor cannot provide a solution due to that, uh, for example, the semiconductor shortage, mm -hmm. but other can provide a solution. Then we can keep our uh, you know the schedule, and uh, also that uh, every time we ask that the uh, vendors, so they are that vendors competition, <laughs> so vendor, yeah, do that uh, innovative uh, solutions. Because uh, they need to, yeah, you know, provide that uh, good solutions. So that's actually uh, we have already had. Uh, and this time we introduce a VRAM, and we are now so uh, how we can uh, improve the, our network, or we, how we can in, uh, decrease the cost to introduce a VRAM. And mm -hmm. VRAM is actually we, you know, the, we use a cloud server. And uh, we, uh, we can we also consider more centralized uh, architecture. Fortunately, we have the fiber. So we, we introduce that the CU is, for example, more centralized. And some other, uh, so Quanet functionality, such, such as UPA, will uh, introduce the same server. Or some cases that the data center we uh, co-locate or sharing that resource. Then in total, we can you know, we can reduce that uh, total uh, number of server, and that uh, also can reduce that uh, TCO and the power consumption. So it's really flexibility that otherwise you would you would not have in mm -hmm. the way you can architect your the, the network resources essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of clear, you know, from Fuse this year that there are a number of operators that have had experience with uh, open RAN systems for a while now that are showing demonstrable advantages and gains we saw from Vodafone in the UK talking about the KPIs, how they were equivalent to or better than the, the legacy systems that have been replaced in, in one of their deployments. So it seems like there's quite a few incentives uh, for, for operators to, uh, to explore and maybe uh, deploy. But there doesn't seem to be much evidence of this happening. Why do you think that is? Why do you think there aren't more operators here at Fuse going, yes, and now we're doing this? Uh, what Vodafone or what Docomo is doing or what Dish is doing, we're doing that as well. well why are there not more? Mm. Yeah, very good questions. Maybe the final decision uh, made by no, me, but uh, so each operator. But uh, so uh, discussing with some, the, some of the operators, uh, they a strong interest to introduce open RAM. But uh, uh, sometimes still they need a time. Uh, one is that, uh, so for, for them, uh, not so uh, sure how you, they uh, operate the open RAM in right. commercial. So one thing that, uh, so uh, integration, so you know that the, after the uh, commercial deployment, we need to upgrade the software. Uh, we need to, so you know uh, upgrade that the so uh, platform. So they, we need to uh, continuously support the integration. But that that's actually uh, they have no uh, you know uh, experience. Yeah. Yeah. So we try to so have a common integration. I mean that we do the integration and uh, our integrated solution provide to the operators, then they can they don't need to have that such resource. They don't need to do that integration by themselves. So uh, some of the operators, uh, yeah, yes, they saw that our uh, solutions. So we are now uh, having some uh, many discussion with operators and other things uh, um, that uh, actually is a. Uh, to, to adding uh, new vendors, uh, new solutions, I think we need that uh, uh, what kind, what additional revenue, right. yeah, right. we will have. So that that is uh, one of the point, and we are also doing some you know uh, services through that 5G network, uh, especially for the enterprise use cases. That's uh, uh, yeah, we try to also explain to that operators. And once that you know uh, we provide the better you know services uh, together with other operators, the cost maybe also uh, uh, become 
uh, small and uh, more easy to introduce at the new services because we use that the cost uh, and the common platform. So it seems like the different operators are at different stages in their network and, and business and cloud oriented development I guess and in time maybe these things will, 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 will come together I guess it's just the maturity of the sector so you know do you, do you think maybe in a couple of years time that the, that the scenario might be uh, quite different is there still a sense that there's more maturity required from uh, the uh, ROI models and the technology and in fact every aspect yeah, uh, the so, so RI model I think still because the most of operators uh, keen to the t, uh, TCO reduction. Right. Yeah. yeah that is uh, so uh, more important. But the, when we discuss the TCO, that is not only that the cost of the VLAN itself. The t, when we need yeah TCO is the total cost ownership. The main that, and total is the really yes, important word there. Yes, total. <laughs> yes. So as I mentioned already, that the so network configuration that's also impact on that TCO, how we deploy that uh, so VLAN, how we share the resource among that other uh, features. So this might be different uh, from the operators since that the network situation is uh, different. So we do that some TCO analysis uh, with other operators since that uh, uh, based on the, their you know uh, situations, and uh, to uh, provide that uh, how we can. Uh, get the benefit in, to introduce that uh, uh, VLAN in the open run. Okay. Well, those sound like very interesting conversations and I, I guess we'll find out in, in 2024 mm -hmm. if that uh, ha has an impact on the number of, of companies that mm -hmm. are maybe talking about how they are bringing their, their networks uh, forward maybe with some, some open RAN deployment. So, Sadayuki, thank you very much for joining us uh, and giving us an update on, on what Docomo is doing. Thank you. Thank you very much.